Hey anime lover I am back with new anime, The Eminence and Shadow Season 2. Before we dive into the first episode, friends I'd really like it if you could click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Many of you watch the videos but forget to do that. Kindly support my work and help me reach 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. At the start of the episode, we see a girl who looks like a wolf climbing a steep hill really quickly. Once she reaches the top, she lets out a very loud howl. After that, we shown a section of the sky turning completely red. After that, we see a scene from the Shadow Kingdom where the Shadow Garden is sitting together. Then Zader reports to everyone that after the Bushin Festival, there hasn't been any activity of the Cult of Diablos in the Midgar Kingdom. Even the small sectors that were in the process of reconstruction have become immobilized due to confusion. Upon hearing this, Gamma says that everything is happening according to Lord Shadow's plan. Now we can focus on the main situation in the Oriana Kingdom. Then other members inform that there's recent news about funds increasing in Lawless City. Beta says that the area doesn't belong to any nation, it's just a big slum where bad things happen. If anything happens there, it could affect the rest of society too. So, Beta suggests that they set aside their other plans and send people there to handle the situation. After this, Shadow says that he can smell blood in Lawless City. After this, everyone looks at the sky and sees that the moon has turned red. Seeing this, everyone says it's quite strange. It feels exactly like that story, the tragedy that happened thousands of years ago. If nothing is done in Lawless City, the surrounding nations will also suffer damage due to the chaos. Hearing this, Alpha says if that's the case, we can't just sit here idle. We are Shadow Garden, we have to do something. That's when Shadow says, let me handle the money, what I mean is, let me handle this matter. In the next scene, we see the same people who Shadow had defeated at the Bushin Festival. They are near the Crimson Tower, a place ruled by the Blood Queen. It's one of the three rules of the Lawless City. This place is also known as the Castle of Vampires. People are so scared of this place that they don't even come near it. If someone dares to approach, they turn into ghouls. We find out that these people have come to investigate this place. Then, we see a man sitting on top of the tower. He tells them that they are not worthy to pass through the gate of this tower. Only servants of the Blood Queen, guests, or powerful warriors are allowed to pass through. Upon hearing this, they laughed and said they might not be guests or servants, but they were definitely powerful warriors. They had come to defeat the Blood Queen. The man laughed and said, You fools. This is what happens to those who challenge the Blood Queen. I lost my hand, so now I have to sit here like a watchdog. I used to be just like you, everyone used to call me the White Devil. Hearing the name White Devil, both of them were surprised because the White Devil is a wanted criminal with the highest bounty on his head. Upon this, the White Devil said he didn't care. He was here to teach a lesson to people like them. After saying this, the White Devil jumped and attacked them. They also attacked the White Devil. After that, bloodstains are shown, but it is not revealed who wins. The scene shifts towards the lawless city where Claire is dragging her younger brother, Cajno. Cajnu remarks that this city is even more of a massive slum than he had imagined. Claire informs Cajnu that their first stop will be at the Dark Organization for a strategic meeting. Hearing this, Keiju expresses surprise since he had never seen such a thing in their city. Claire clarifies that they have their own Knight Orders, and the Dark Knight Association is an unofficial organization created by Dark Knight, not associated with any public institution. Following this, Keiju recalls his journey, how he had died in the previous world, and after reincarnating in this world, he became a Shade. Despite his unwillingness, he had to do many things. Later on, we learn that in the previous year's Bushin Festival, Keijnu's sister, Claire, emerged as the winner. To celebrate this victory, Keijnu taken help from Gamma to dress like girl and throw a grand party at a fancy restaurant. However, after this, Claire takes Keijnu to Lawless City for a vampire hunt. Claire reveals that she brought Keijnu along because she is concerned about his future. To which Keijnu says, what the future? In response, Claire explains that if Keijnu continues to stay with her and follows her guidance, he could potentially join the Midgard Night Order after completing his education. To which Kaganu says nothing, because Kaganu has come to Lawless City for some other purpose. Kajnu and her sister are on their way when a street vendor stops them and asks if they want to see high-quality pets. However, those two pets are not ordinary, they are the same two night we saw at the beginning of the episode. Upon seeing them, Kajnu mentions that he has seen them somewhere before. Claire, ignoring Kajnu's comment, declines the vendor and tells him that he already has a pet. After saying this, Claire leaves with Kajnu. Kajnu tells Claire to stop dragging him, as he can walk on his own. Claire insists that Kajnu should stay with her, or he may lost. Kajnu assures Claire that he won't wander. After this, we shown an evening scene, where we see that Kajnu has actually lost and he is standing alone, and eating food. Then, a man purposely bumps into Kajnu, who turns out to be a thief trying to steal Kajnu's wallet. 
but Cage New is no pushover, he uses his abilities to steal the thief's wallet as well. Afterward, Cage New says that it's karma in action. He continues his journey, encountering more thieves along the way who keep trying to steal his wallet. Cage New does to them what he did with the first thief. He takes back his wallet and also swipes the wallets of those thieves. In the end, Cage New amasses quite a collection of wallets. Cage New was walking along a street when he heard a commotion from an alley. He saw a group of people beating up a ghoul. Cage New thought ghouls had high hit points and were being used like punching bags by the locals. However, he looked up and saw a magical power emanating from a red moon, which suddenly made the ghoul much more powerful. It started attacking everyone, and those beaten by the ghoul turned into ghouls. Keiju realized that the ghoul had become so powerful due to the magical energy from the red moon. He contemplated whether to act as a bystander or fight them. He decided that such opportunities were rare, so he chose to confront the ghouls. As the ghouls tried to attack Keijinu, a girl appeared and helped him defeat them. Keijinu asked for her name, and she introduced herself as Mary, an ancient vampire hunter. She warned Keijinu to run away because the red moon had risen, and they didn't have much time. After saying this, Mary left. On the other side, Claire realizes that Cage New is not in his room. Just then, a man rushes in from the next room because a ghoul girl was after him. Claire defeats the ghoul, and she asks the man about Cage New. However, the man says he hasn't seen a boy look like that. After this, the scene shifts to two enthusiastic young men. Their faces show excitement because they had gone to a place where most boys would want to visit at least once in their lives. This place is no less than a paradise for boys. As you've probably guessed, these two guys have arrived there. Suddenly, someone pushes them and they fall down. The ones who push them are ghouls. After that, the scene shifts to another girl who is in a lot of pain, and you all know why. She's thinking about how long she has to do this when she hears a scream from outside. She looks outside and sees that ghouls are causing chaos everywhere, attacking everyone. A ghoul enters her room, but before it can attack her, Shadow comes and saves her. Shadow also tells her to leave if she values her life. The girl asks Shadow for his name, and Shadow introduces himself and then he leaves. Then, another girl comes in and asks Marie if she's okay. Marie tells her that someone named Shadow saved her. The girl mentions that Shadow is an evil mastermind who fights bad people and is more dangerous than the rulers of each city says. Marie says she can't believe that Shadow is a bad guy, she packs her things, and tells the other girl that her job is done and she's leaving. The other girl warns Marie not to break her contract and asks if she knows what those people will do to her if they find out about her. Marie dismisses the warning and thanks Shadow. In the next scene, we see a burning city. A girl is sitting up there, observing, and she tells people that they are trying to escape is useless. If they manage to run away, they can survive. She also says that the past is never kind, and not everyone will make it out. Then, two girls come to her and report that vampires have sent ghoul into the city. In the next scene, we see Claire holding a corpse, thinking it's her brother Cajno. Then, Mary arrives and tells Claire that the person she's holding isn't her brother but someone else. Claire asks Mary where she saw her brother, and Mary explains that she met him just a while ago. Claire throws the body and asks where Mary saw her brother. Mary tells her that she saw a different person, and Blood Queen followers were taking that person with them. Claire questions Mary about where they took that person. Mary tells her that in Crimson Tower, her brother is in the Blood Queen's castle. The vampires are sacrificing your brother for the Blood Queen because they want to awaken Elizabeth after a thousand years of sleep. Claire asks why they want to awaken the Blood Queen tonight. Mary explains that they've kept this thing secret for a long time, and they've been waiting for this day for a thousand years. This night is when vampires gain immense power, and it's the night the Red Moon rises again. Claire notices that the moon is turning red. Mary says that the red moon is also affecting the sleeping queen. Now, Claire has to save her brother Cajnu, and Mary has to eliminate the blood queen. So, they decide to move forward together. Just then, several ghouls appear, and they both team up to defeat them. In the next scene, we see the same perverted boys running for their lives. On the other hand, Knight and the city are running because of ghouls, but a girl stands her ground to confront these ghouls. Just when the ghouls are about to attack her inside her office, someone eliminates those ghouls, and it turns out that the person is none other than Shadow. After that, the scene shifts to the Crimson Lord, where his servant informs him that the plan for the sacrificial ritual is proceeding as planned. But there are some people interfering. To this, the Crimson Lord chuckles and says that he knows who these people are. They think they are equal to me. Yukaim, the Spirit Fox, rules the White Tower and Juggernaut, the Tyrant, rules the Black Tower. Let them play their game. They will meet their end when Blood Queen revives. After that, the Servant reports that someone is killing ghouls, Lord Crimson. We see Yukaim and Juggernaut fighting ghouls. Then, they start fighting each other. Meanwhile, in the sky, Shadow watches everything, saying nothing has changed. Someone is trying to twist the new story, but Shadow remains the same. 
he continues his journey to become the eminence in shadow. After saying this, he interrupts their fight and with this episode ends here. If you enjoyed the new anime video, please remember to click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do that too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.